Hi everyone, thanks so much for coming to my YouTube channel. My name is Lex Ash and today I am going to be doing something interesting. Um, I have done some editing videos on this channel before, but today I'm going to actually be showing my face so you can see how I'm thinking about what I'm doing and also doing it. So I'm going to be talking to the camera and I'm also going to be recording on my screen so you can see exactly every step I am taking. Um, for those who are new here, welcome. For those who are returning welcome back um yeah i'm going to be doing more stuff like this like i said this year we are going in on my youtube channel so yes i'm definitely going to be doing some really really interesting things so yeah simply i'm going to start with this image so this image i'm going to be editing i shot it all the way back last year actually i can't remember the month exactly i think it was october um i shot it as part of a series with a friend who she was she, she's now a friend her name is joe beautiful beautiful model incredible amazing person um enjoyed this shoot with her fully and i was trying to go for something retro something glowy as you can see i haven't even edited the picture yet and it's already looking glistening and glowy you can see the image is already glossy it's already shiny um i i, I can i'll tell you how i shot it i literally just put like some uh what's it called some oil or gel on a an old filter that i have and put it on my lens and i was able to get this glowy glossy feel you can get that by getting a black promise filter or something similar but i don't have any of those so i decided to work with what i had which was just a plain regular glass filter like a protective filter and i put some baby oil on it just to give it that extra gloss and glow and i put it only on selected parts so it's not be everywhere that's why you can still see a lot of clarity on her skin and this one. so that's the Im this is the image i'm going to be working on and like i said i want to go for something glossy and glowy and i'm not going to really do too much in the lightroom but i just wanted you to see how i think about my processes um i would typically go first and use one of my presets which i have a lot of but just for the sake of this video, I'm going to edit everything from scratch so you can see just exactly how I think about things. So the first thing I do is I go straight to the lens, the, what's it called, lens, -ish, lens uh, section, the lens correction section, and I make sure that I have enabled profile corrections and removed chromatic aberrations. The reason is that every lens to a certain tiny degree at certain um, aperture levels, maybe it's 1.2 or 1.4, 1.8, they have a little bit of chromatic aberrations. But thankfully, Lightroom has a way of recognizing your lens and correcting for that so automatically it did that for me so i didn't i don't have to do anything there and the second thing i like to do is i like to put my sharpening in the middle middle um take my luminance up just a little bit and remove all color from the noise now there's no noise in this image like that like this the lighting is pretty good but just in case i typically just do this and you will never see if there's no need for it you know you won't see it in the edit but if there is need for it it's very clear because what i do why i remove the color is because it it changes what looks like noise to grain and that works amazingly well for me um, so those are the first things that I do. Once I do it, then now I can now go to the basic editing layer and work with that. So I think the exposure is kind of good, but I'm just going to tinker a little bit um, to get to make sure that my details are where I need them to be. I'm going to take down the blacks with this image just so that it has a little bit more punch. And I'm going to keep the whites up. One thing I want to do is I wanted to have this... Uh, vintage glowy feel so it's very very cool right now it's very shiny but it's very cool and white so i'm going to take the temperature up a little bit so it has a little bit more gold in it and as you can see it's already changed the image beautifully automatically to balance that out i'm going to move the tint towards magenta just so it doesn't look too green and yellowy you know because black skin even though you're light skinned it still has you want to be able to maintain it as easy as possible as as close to natural as possible and um, i'm going to leave the highlights up i'm going to take the whites up just a little bit as well i'm going to increase the clarity a little bit just so that it's like i said a little bit more punchy and i'm going to dehaze it just so that some of that glue comes down a little bit not necessarily that i want to take it out but just enough that it is still glowy still glistening but very crisp and sharp and then as you can see in the tone curve i don't have anything in the blacks 
and I don't have any. I only have, and I, I do have some in the white, but not a lot. So I'm going to try and punch in the blacks a little bit. Like I said, I want to make it a little bit more punchy so that the glows can stand out very well against the whites. So now on the tone curve, I notice that there's no black in the image as much as it should be. So I'm going to be enhancing the blacks. That's what I'm going to do here. So just so that it's a bit punchier, as you can see that already has changed the whole thing. It's already changed the whole image. Um, but I want to go a little further and add some magenta into the shadows. I'm going to go to the greens and then also add a little bit of greens to the blacks. And then add a few little greens to the blacks. So it's a too much. To the highlight, to the Also, um, I'm also going to play around with the skin tones as well in the HSL color layer. I'm going to take the saturation down just a little bit and also add a little bit of red to it just so that it feels as natural as possible. So much so I'm going to take it back. That's fair. Alright. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's it. So at this point I'm going to take it into Photoshop. So now we are in Photoshop, I have the image opened. Now, when I was shooting, I decided that I was gonna use, like I wanted to get that shiny background. So I put some foil on the backdrop and, but I wasn't able to get enough foil to fill the entire backdrop. So I have some spaces, as you can see, that do not have any, uh, what's it called on it? That do not have any foil on it. So I'm going to fill that place in. That's the first thing I'm going to do. To do that, I'm going to use the um, patch tool just to select the area and to fill it with the places that have that. And then, yeah, that's it. So here as well, this entire area, but I don't have enough. <laughs> real estate to work on that so but just bear with me i'm going to have to do it little by little and that's it small small we're getting some of it and then this one exactly so right now we have something that looks very good there we go so now i have all of it filled with the effect that the four girls and yeah so typically i would um, just go straight and use my, you know, frequency separation action. If you've not seen how it's made, you can check my previous videos. I don't want to go through the process of creating from scratch for this particular part of the editing process. So I'm just going to run my advanced frequency separation um, action. Now, some people ask me what radius to use. I typically would use, it's usually based on the how much real estate the skin is taking in the image and i'm not just talking about the facial skin i'm also talking about the hands the neck and the chest so i would say this is about give or take 30 percent of the entire screen so i will give it about somewhere between four and five like sort of five six somewhere there um just so that i still have some color and the some some texture in the color um low frequency region just a little bit so that when i'm smoothing things out i can actually smoothen it out without having to do too much 
all right so that's okay and now i have my low frequency layer i have my high frequency layer now with the mixer brush tool which is what i use on the low frequency layer these are the values that i work with um, i'm sure other people have the different kinds that they work with but this is what i like um, i try to not do too much i don't want any of my of the effects to be heavy-handed so this is what i've worked with so i'm just going to quickly run through uh cleaning up the skin and evening out the skin tones and making sure that the transitions between the highlights and the shadows are good so here we go mm. So I increase and decrease my brush depending on the area I'm working with just so that I'm not dragging too much from any particular part to the other part. Um, yeah, so that's why I'm doing and my hand is on the brush increase and reduction tool. So and then I also like to zoom in and zoom out at ease just so that I can see what I'm doing from a distance and also from a close up range. So here i'm just zooming out just to see how it's looking and i think it's looking great i'm coming back in to make sure that i have something good as well um, yes yeah, so just to continue make sure that all the highlights are where they should be making that all the make sure that all the shadows are where they should be and making sure that the transition between both of them are great and yeah, I think we're kind of in a good place here. The skin is already looking amazing. In fact, to be fair, this is someone whose skin was already good to begin with. So I'm not having to do too much. Um, I also want to adjust the wig closure as well, just so that it doesn't look weird. I'm going to use the, the clone stamp to adjust those edges there and take it out so that it doesn't look as much like a wig as it did initially so it just looks like the hair is from my head and that's it um just to clean out some of the ring the the few the very few pimples here and there that you know i'm going to leave that indentation there because i just like to do that <laughs> because um, just so that it keeps it natural so things that are temporary i take out things that are permanent i kind of leave there because that's kind of how it works or well, that's how the face looks i don't know why this one is there and yeah so i think the face is currently in a good place as i speak um, i'm just going to do a little bit on the chest and the hands right now I don't believe in over smoothening so I try to keep things as simple and soft handed as I possibly can so this is what I'm working with um, I should be done any moment now there we go I think I like what it looks like right now um, just these parts Zoom out to. All right. So at this juncture is just to merge the image and save it. I could just save it at this point and I should be fine. But something I also like to do is I like to also, you know, play around with adding a little bit more bokeh. And to do that, I'm going to use the exposure software, which I just double with. I play around with every now and again just to give it a certain look and feel. So for this image, I just want the, the glow to be a little bit more. So to do that, I'm just going to increase the halation. 
just so that the shine comes out a little bit more as well and I'm going to also take I'm going to dehaze it a little bit as well just to reduce it and then also increase some of the contrast um, and then the sharpening as well and I think we're in a good place I like what it looks like right now um, yeah and um, maybe finally I'm going to add a little bit more interest in the bokeh just so that it has a very um, interesting looking feel so I want to change this to a star make sure it's star and um, yeah so just to add a little bit more visual interest in the in the in the blurry background or so all right and that's it I'm just gonna apply that and after that I will merge at this point I just want to increase the sharpness a little bit I'm going to just use this uh, action that I got from Pixel Perfect just to sharpen the image general look of, of the image all together a little bit um, yeah Yeah, so I think it's a little bit too sharp, so I'm just going to take it down a notch, and that should be okay. And then I merge and save, and merge and save. And now we have it in Lightroom, you know, all I need to do now is to just, you know, correct the eyes. And thankfully Lightroom already has a preset for eye enhancement. I'm just going to run that quickly. Um, yeah, just give me a second. Yeah. So enhance eyes. And it's very subtle, but it's very, this is AI, it's very subtle, but it's very good. It enhances the contrast of the iris and also brightens the eyes just a little bit without it looking unnatural. And there we go. And I like it as it is. I'm just going to add a little bit more coolness to the eye. Just a little teeny weeny bit. And that's pretty much it. Let's do some green. And yeah that's it and we have it that's all there is and then to export I know people ask me how I export my images to export the image I just go to export and my parameters are consistent I just make sure that the quality is on a hundred I never reduce it and then I keep my long edge on somewhere between 3000 and 35 because if you're posting on social media if you're printing small photos you don't need anything more than that to be honest and um, you just need to also make sure your resolution is between 240 to 300 i don't like to reduce it at all i know some people do but it's just the way i do my thing um and yeah i export and once i do um it's amazing quality and you can see the final image here you can see the final image here. So I hope this was a very educative, enlightening experience. And um, please don't forget to like, comment, and share. Um, I'll be doing more stuff like this in the very near future. Please don't forget to subscribe, share with all your friends, and you know if you learned a thing or two, please share it below. If you have any questions, don't forget to share it below. If you have any concerns, any thoughts, any things you would like me to share more on this channel, please don't forget to drop that in the comments as well. Till next time, it's your boy Lex Ash. <laughs>